Hi, it's Professor Seagraves. This quick lecture recording is just how to calculate some really basic real estate, or really these are more finance calculations than specifically real estate, but we use them a lot in real estate. We're going to do it both in Excel, but we're also going to use the classic uh, Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator, so you can learn both ways of doing it. Um, so, we're going to start off with the very, the most basic, and we will just use Excel to calculate a payment. So let's go ahead and get our assumptions in here for Excel. And let's say that we're doing a 30-year loan and our interest rate is 5%. And our balance of the loan is, um, well, let's, let's go ahead and add uh, one little element in here. We'll say that we're going to get a 75% uh, loan to value and that the purchase price of the building is a million dollars. So let me go ahead and get some uh, some titles here, rate, and we have a million dollars. So our loan is going to be 75% of the million. This is our loan to value. So we're going to be able to borrow 75% of the purchase price. So that's a simple a million dollars times our 75%. It's going to give us our $750,000. So the payment is in Excel, just simply PMT. We're going to open the parentheses. We're going to point the first uh, point to our rate. We're going to divide that by 12. These are typically monthly payments. And we're going to point now to our number of periods. And now we'll multiply by 12. And that'll give us 360 periods. And then we're going to use the amount that we're borrowing, or the loan amount. And we get a payment of 4000 and $26.16. All right, well, let's do that with the calculator. So we're going to use our second and clear our time value of money registers. Clear. If you turn this on, it'll still have potentially some values in your uh, time value of money registers. So we'll clear all those out. And we will go ahead and start with 360 is going to be in. That's how many periods we have. Our rate is going to be 5%, then divide that by 12, and that's going to be 0.42. And uh, go ahead and just, all the decimals are still in the calculator. They're, I'm only showing the first two. So we're going to put, click our interest uh, per year, or interest per period uh, uh, register there. And our present value, we would just say our million uh, times our 0.75 equals our 750,000 and we're just going to put that in our present value and now we will compute our payment and we have the same value uh, four thousand twenty six dollars and sixteen cents okay well that's how we did it on the calculator and now we're going to figure out what our our payoff is let's say that we want to know what the payoff is of the loan after after five years so Payoff. Um, this would be the balance as well, and um, let's just say that uh, here we'll put after uh, five years, and that's going to be after um, 60 payments. So five times 12 is 60. So after our 60th payment, um, what is going to be the payoff of our loan? Uh, we can also in Excel probably the easiest way to do this is to do the present value of the remaining payments. So we'll just do equals PV, and we'll say our rate is that rate that we had earlier divided by 12. Number of periods is going to be the, uh, the 30. And but remember, we have to take away the 5. So we have uh, 30 years minus 5 years. We do need to multiply that result by 12, so I'm going to put parentheses around here. And we'll multiply that times 12. And what is our payment? Well, the payment we already know. We've already calculated it. It's right there. And there we go. After five years, our payoff is $688,715. All right, well, let's look at how we would get that on our calculator. So probably the easiest way to do this uh, with the calculator is we're just going to use our amortization uh, function. So we've already got all the other values in there. We already have the 30 
the rate, um, the original loan amount, and we've calculated the payment. So uh, we don't have to have calculated the payment as long as we have the end interest and the present value of the original loan. We can simply use our AMORT function. See, there's an AMORT right there, so we hit second amortization. And this allows me to look at all the interest or principal paid between two periods. It'll also give me the balance um, at the end of the uh, periods under question. So we can start with the first period. This really value doesn't really matter so much for getting the balance. It's that second period that we're concerned with. So we're going to look at all the interest and principal paid between the first period and, in this case, the 60th period. We're going to hit enter. And so now we are running, we're using our arrows, from the first period to the 60th period. The balance at the end of that is 688, 715, 69. Here we go, 688, 715, 69. I don't know why it says 49. Probably a difference in the rounding between Excel and my calculator. And we can also see in that first five years, We've also paid off $61,000 in principal. We had $180,000 in interest that was paid um, in those first five years. All right, well, using this exact same function on the calculator, um, well, we'll do it in Excel first. Let's say that we want to figure out the interest that was paid in any future period. Let's say that we want to figure the interest that was paid in the, um, in the 11th year. So if, uh, to do that in Excel, um, paid in the 11th year, we're going to use um, the cumulative interest uh, payment, our cumulative, cumulative interest function in Excel, and that'll just tell us the total interest paid in any range of different payments. So we are going to hit equals CU, uh, CU um, whoops, UM, cumulative interest payment. We also have cumulative principal. So either one of these, this one will tell you the interest paid uh, between two periods and cumulative principal will tell you the principal paid between two periods. So I'm going to use the interest paid function here and we use that one. Oops, I need to go ahead and put my value on my I need to go ahead and finish that off in my rate is the one we used earlier, 5, it's going to be divided by 12 though, of course. The number of periods is the periods for the entire loan. Um, so we're looking at the total, so we're going to have our 30 times our 12, and our original present value, which was our 750,000. Again, we could multiply the thousand, the million times the 75%. And now, if we're going to be looking at the 11th year, we're going to look at the first month of that 11th year, and that's going to be the 121st, 121st period. And the last uh, payment for that uh, first year is going to be 132. So we put 132 in there. And these are going to be paid at the end of the period. All these payments are paid at the end of the period, so we just have to put a zero in there. Some functions in Excel, you can leave that blank and I'll just assume, but this is one case where we need to go ahead and put in the value. So, and I hit enter, and we have the amount of interest that was paid in that 11th year. So let's do the same thing in our calculator. So we already have the 30 and the rate, and we have our original value uh, plugged in there. And we're going to just go back into that. Now uh, we're still in this amortization function. And we were looking at the first month through the 60th month. Now we want to do the same thing we did before. We want to make this a 121. Enter. And then we're going to go down and change the second period to 132. Enter. And now we can see that the interest that was paid in that 11th year well, the 11th year is the 121st payment through the 132nd payment. That interest was 30089 uh, 43 There we go. And again, I'm not sure exactly why we have a uh, more pennies off here, but um, again, I suspect it has to do with uh, how many digits that get rounded in Excel versus the calculator, but you're within striking distance on either one of those. All right, and 
kind of the last thing that we'll you know, uh, the next thing that we'll take a look at is depreciation uh, tax savings. So go ahead and delete um, uh, some of this stuff here. So we don't really need the interest and the payoffs and so forth. Uh, depreciation allows us to reduce our taxes by spreading the value of the improvements on a piece of real estate over a number of years. It would be great to take depreciation all at once. Unfortunately, the IRS requires us to spread that out. Um, and we have uh, two schedules, and this is straight line depreciation with real estate. We have two schedules for residential. It's 27 and a half years. And for other types of commercial property, property such as office buildings, industrial, uh, warehouses, retail, it's 39 years. Um, residences wear out faster. They get beat up. People are living in them uh, sometimes 24 hours a day. And uh, you know, office buildings, you only go there during work hours, and they, they tend to not um, depreciate as fast. So let's take a look at the um, depreciation. Let's say that uh, similar to what we had here, we have a, a building that was worth a million dollars, but we're only able to depreciate the building, not the land. So let's say that the land is 10% of the value. So we are able to depreciate 90% um, of the value. So this is our depreciable base. So the amount that we can depreciate, we'll just say is uh, our original purchase price uh, times 1 minus our 10%. And that's going to give us $900,000. And now the amount that we can depreciate each year is going to be, whoops, um, so our annual depreciation is going to be the uh, $900,000 divided by 27 and a half years. So this is a residential. And let's say, um, and we'll do another one down here. And we'll say the next one is going to be an office building. So it's going to be the 900000 divided by our 39. That's the amount we can depreciate every year if it's office. Well, how much tax is that going to save us? That just depends on the marginal tax rate of the individual or the business. So if my tax rate is 25%, then I'm going to save 25%. Uh, my taxes, are gonna, I'm going to be saving 25% of this depreciation amount each year. So, so my tax savings is going to be simply the annual depreciation times the tax rate. And we do that here for the office. So my tax savings for a residential building, an apartment building, for example, would be 81 about $8,200 a year, and my tax savings if this same thing were an office building would be about $57.69 per year. Now doing that on a calculator is uh, easy breezy. Um, we'll simply have the, um, the million dollars uh, times the point nine, which is the amount of uh, the value of the building, not the land. This is leaving out the land. We've got our 900000 and if it is um, a residential building, an apartment building, for example, we're going to divide that by 27.5 to get our 32,727 that matches up here, and simply multiply that by our tax rate. And we get our $8,181 uh, $8, in tax savings. And all we would do if this were office, we would substitute that 39 years for the 27 and a half years to calculate depreciation.